is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning, happy Tuesday. March 30th, April is right around the corner. Easter Sunday is almost here and I'm gonna stuff my face with plenty of ham and mashed potatoes. I can't wait. Listen, my project at work has finally calmed down. It came to an end last week on Friday about seven o'clock at night. I was working 12, 13, 14, 15 hour days, weekends included. I finally feel rested. I can finally breathe. I got my gym schedule back. Life is good, people. I'm happy that is over. New system is great. Now it's time for the next project. But listen, enough about me. We got a lot to go over. The SEC, they've been caught with the pants down. I love it. Wait till you hear this one. They're not getting out of this so quick. I'm going to also tell you what is going to happen with this SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. I am 95% positive. I know the outcome. I'm going to tell it to you. It's going to be a two-part outcome. One for Ripple, one for the asset XRP. We're also going to talk about John E. Deaton. And then we're going to talk about a massive new partnership that was just announced last night by Ripple. Wait till you see this. But before we get into it, you know what you got to do. Like, subscribe, turn those notifications, hit that bell. Give me a follow on Twitter at XRP News underscore. Do not forget the underscore because you get that creepy guy. He has the ball. He does that little thing with his fingers. He tells you 589 overnight. It's not going to happen. Don't listen to him. Don't follow him because you will not be happy. So the market, what's up? Green. XRP, that's what's up. 58 cents. I love it. Listen, the official XRP bull market is going to begin when we break 82 cents and we need to break we need to close above it for a day and then bada bing bada boom xrp will enter its bull market it's going to stop pumping like you have never seen it pump before 2017 got nothing on what xrp is about to do we are slowly creeping up the bitcoin dominance is slowly coming down we're seeing all the other alts in the market starting to run up xrp is going to have its time to shine don't you worry Bitcoin dominance has creeped down to 58.9%. This is a great sign. The total market cap has gone up. We are almost at 1.9 trillion. I told you we are easily going to break 2 trillion before the summer gets here. Bitcoin sitting at a smooth 59,000. Ethereum, 1,800. They're both in the green. But you know, XRP, 58 cents. SEC, what did you do? You crashed us to 17. We came storming back. We're about the same price levels before the lawsuit. You can't hold us down for so long. Jay Clayton, you're a slime bag. You know what you did. Oh, did everyone see the news about Jay Clayton? He joined, I think it's One River, who's like heavily invested in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Jay Clayton needs to be investigated. He needs to be looked into for what he did. There was a reason that he sat as the head of the SEC for so long holding down and not giving Ripple the clarity they needed or giving XRP the clarity they needed. He joined a company that is solely based on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Motive people, he needs to be looked into. There is no way this was not criminal what he did. I'm not gonna talk about him any, but any longer. I don't wanna ruin everyone's morning. When they hear that name, they get the chills and they get upset. I know, I get it, so do I. Definitely do not like the man. Let's just jump into news. Here we go. Yesterday we covered how the big announcement was Visa chosen Ethereum to settle on. No, no, no. Not so fast, people. Listen, at the end of the day, when this is all said and done, as I stated yesterday, as I'm going to state today, as I'm going to state six months from now, the I, everything will run through the ILP, the Interledger Protocol. XRP will be the universal bridge for settlements this whole visa ethereum isn't what it meant to be this is like the same story when the winklevoss twins came out two years ago saying you can now spend your bitcoin in starbucks to buy a coffee it was so false you didn't spend your bitcoin you put your bitcoin to a credit card through a third party you took that prepaid credit card that you loaded with bitcoin you went in there and you swiped it like cash if you're spending your Bitcoin, you're going in there and you are directly transferring Bitcoin from your Bitcoin wallet to their Bitcoin wallet. That's not what happened. That was another false narrative. This right here, this whole Ethereum Visa thing, it's another false narrative. Listen, Arturo Patilla breaks it down. I'm going to read it to you. 
believe it's about a six part tweet, but he, he has a really great understanding of what is actually going on and how this really isn't a step forward for the crypto industry. Listen to this. He says, after reading six or seven articles about this announcement, I think I finally got to weed out the the un unsustainable noise and actually understand how the USD slash USDC slash USD settlement and payment process on Visa's treasuries will work. Crypto.com users who hold USDC and have a Visa card attached to the Crypto.com account, they make USD payments to a Visa merchant. USD payments are cleared, but funds are not immediately transferred by Crypto.com to Visa, aka they aren't settled immediately. At the end of the day, Crypto.com sends a USDC batch transfer over Ethereum to Visa's ETH address held on Anchorage, hence settling its intraday payments obligations. Visa is then taking some credit risk, which will translate into costs for Visa partners and merchants. Once Visa has received the USDC batch transfer in Anchorage, the latter uses its bank charter to redeem the stable coins for actual dollars and deliver them to Visa. Visa uses the dollars to settle its outstanding payment obligations with the merchants acquiring banks. My personal tank, this is Otero's personal take, rather than building an actual innovative solution that helps creating efficiencies or reducing costs, Visa has built a not very useful product to make the markets believe they are innovating and keep attracting crypto companies and wallets to its network. Also, due to price volatility, batch settlement is most is most likely unfeasible with non-stable coins. I don't think this specific solution will evolve into integrated cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum. What many people don't seem to understand or care about is that batch T plus N day settlements, so T plus three, four, five day settlements cost the banks associated with credit and liquidity risk into payment systems. Building treasury solutions for stablecoin batch settlements is just a distraction and doesn't actually help to improve everyday payments as it doesn't make them quicker or cheaper. One of the original selling points of crypto and blockchain was that the tech offered the possibility to cut out the middleman from the financial system. Visa is trying to force its participation in a system that runs on protocol rules that were, that were designed to replace what Visa does. The solution built by Crypto.com and Visa involves at least four intermediaries that don't have a clear role for P2P protocol, including Crypto.com card issuer, Visa the card network, Anchorage the USDC custodian, and merchants acquiring banks. Far from, be, far from bringing innovation to payments, this is a hodgepodge that will help incumbents perpetuate the good old payment rails into the future, at least until something like a CBDC pre present and actual alternative. So listen, this is what's going on here. To sum this up real quick, Crypto.com is sending USDC batch payment transfers over to Ethereum's address that is sitting on Visa's Anchorage account. It's an intraday pet, uh, payment. So what happens when the price of Ethereum starts moving? Well, they got to take on the risk of that now, don't they? When Visa decided, because they already partnered with how many different Ripple partners, if they decided to use XRP and to build upon the XRP ledger or to build upon the interledger protocol, XRP could be settling those payments right on the spot. There would be no price fluctuations. There would be nothing. There would be no batch payments being sent. You make a payment. It goes to XRP. It shoots out the currency you need. It's done. Instead, you're sending batch payments once a day. This isn't going to work. This isn't a true blockchain protocol payment gateway setup. There are four different people involved. The whole idea of getting blockchain and cryptocurrencies in here was to remove the middleman. What do you think Ripple is doing? They are trying to replace Swift because all Swift is is a bunch of middlemans. I said it to Bank A, but Bank A doesn't have my currency, so Bank A got to go to Bank B, but if Bank B doesn't have it either, Bank B got to go to Bank C. Bank C comes all the way back to Bank B, who gives it back to Bank A. There are fees along that whole ways. Well, using Ripple or RippleNet, Bank A goes from their public blockchain network to the public 
network to settle and move the money through XRP back out to the currency of choice, back to the private network. All transactions are kept private. XRP is bridged. There is no need to get bank A, bank B, bank C, bank D involved. Visa is going to learn the hard way, but I also believe Visa is just doing this for the time being to say that they were first to the game. I firmly believe that they are building out a better solution on top of the RippleNet platform, the RippleNet protocol, or the Interledger protocol. That is why they teamed out with MoneyGram, and they teamed out with Currency Cloud, and they got into a bidding war with Earthport. Think about it. There is a reason for everything. Now from a man, Lord Lightnell, give him a follow. Lightnell, 462945550. That is not his phone number. Do not call it. I tried calling it. Nothing pretty happens after it. He puts out this, or he sends out this tweet from Crypto Law Breaking. The SEC was defeated in an attempt to block XRP holders. It's motion to intervene. Judge Torres grants request from John E. Deaton to submit a motion to intervene on behalf of XRP holders and, set a, and sets a submission timetable. Read the judge's orders here. Number one, the proposed intervent, interveners. Request for leave to file a motion to intervene is granted. By April 19th, not that long away, the proposed investors, the XRP holders led by Johnny Deaton, shall file their motion or intervene. By May 3rd, the plaintiff, which is the SEC, shall file its, op its opposition papers and defendants, Ripple, Brad, and Chris, shall file their response papers if they have any. By 517, the proposed interveners, which are the XRP holders, shall file their reply to the SEC. Opposition papers and defendants, Ripples, Brad, and Chris, response papers, if any. And then the plaintiff shall file a reply to defendants' response papers, if any. Please note, the judge has not granted the motion, but she has rejected the SEC's arguments that XRP holders be denied the opportunity to submit it. So here's what's going on. The SEC tried to... Get rid of Johnny Deaton's class action lawsuit against the SEC for the failure to protect investors. The SEC said that XRP holders only want to see the value of XRP go up. That's why they were so interested in this case. Well, you wouldn't say, SEC, we are investing in XRP because we want to see the value decline. Are you kidding me? What kind of statement is that? Listen. Telling you, that's going to be the title of this video. The SEC has been caught the pants down. Jay Clayton set the SEC up here to fail. I think Gary Gensler's uh, whole inauguration is being delayed because he's in a very bad position here. And this is how it's going to end. Mark my words. And it's happening this year and it's going to happen soon, people. XRP is going to be declared a non-security. It will be delisted. Life will go on. On the other hand, Brad and Chris will be forced to pay some kind of fine for their selling of XRP. I don't know how much it's going to be. I really don't care how much it's going to be. But that's how it's going to end. There's going to be two different end cases here. Ripple, Brad, Chris will be fine. They will be paying some money. XRP will be determined not security. XRP being determined not security comes sooner than you think. I think the Brad, Chris, and Ripple lawsuit piece of this goes on. I think it goes on for a little while. It's probably into next year. And I also believe that there's going to be a settlement behind closed doors because everyone's going to pretty much forget about it at that time because XRP, XRP already received its clearance and it's already off and it's taken its moonshot. That's what I think. I'm 95% sure that's how it ends. Mark my words. Let's keep going. And the biggest news of the day last night. Trangelo and Ripple have finally announced a partnership. This is big time. It says this partnership with Ripple will see both companies combine their in-depth expertise to address the challenges associated with cross-border payments. Brad Gollinghouse then tweets out, thrilled to finally announce this one. Combining Trangelo's APAC footprint with RippleNet will create an even better experience for customers who can take advantage of both on-demand liquidity and line of credit. Brad's telling you right there, yes, this partnership with Trangelo is going to use XRP. That is the question we always want to know. Brad came straight out last night and he told you, yes, XRP will be used. And Ashish Birla chimes in. It was fresh off the press to start this week. Ripple is acquiring a 40% stake in the cross-border payments hub Trangelo. 
to expand on-demand liquidity in the Philippines plus new corridors starting in Southeast Asia. And Brooks Whistle and I, I don't want to mess up the name, but we'll call him Amiri, are joining its board of directors. So she's told us not too long ago, new corridors are coming on board. I know we heard this before, but now you have it. I told you everything was going to start in Asia. With this partnership, everything is going to start in Asia. Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, Japan, you name it. And guess what? There's even a connection into China and into the largest payment platform over there. Here we go. Listen to this. Ripple is now partnered with WeChat and Alipay with the goal to expand XRP use. That's what he means. They even installed their recent hire from Goldman Sachs onto the board. This is a power move to start dominating the region. When he's talking about the region, he's talking about the APAC area. Eventually, they're going to dominate the whole globe. I couldn't agree even more. We go over to Tangelo's website. Check this out. Global support over 1,300 banks in over 100 different countries. Look at some of the partners. First one, Alipay. Who remembers from 2017 when Alipay was on Ripple's website. I sure do. WeChat Pay, bottom right. Instagram, where have we heard that name, people? TransferWise, where have we heard that name? Ripple is building the networks of networks, and this network right here, 1,300 banks, over 100 different countries, is going to use on-demand liquidity, and they're going to use line of credit. Line of credit, for those of you who don't know, who do not know for these smaller banks, these smaller companies who cannot afford to get in bed with Ripple to pay the startup fees, they can take out a line of credit and they can pay it back over time. It's like almost like you going to the bank and getting a line of credit, you pay them interest. And then as we scroll down, it says our payout pay partners and they list Unipay, Ripple partner, Bcash, Ripple partner. Yes, Bank, another Ripple partner. It says every single one of our partners is transforming the way people pay. Trangelo's network allows them and you to reach more markets every day, impacting and enriching millions of people positively with the latest fintech solutions. And the latest fintech solution is Ripple and RippleNet and on-demand liquidity. This is some of the biggest news I have heard in quite some time. We know what we know what's going on in Japan with SBI. We now have Trangelo over in that whole region. You see the connections between Alipay and WeChat Pay. This is tremendous. American Express is a Ripple partner for like four years now. They're already over into China. This is big news. People do not sleep on it. And then from Michael at Val5 Links, what happens when Walmart buys one billion of Bitcoin? Let's make this clear. Walmart has not announced a purchase of one billion worth of Bitcoin. But it will. And it will, and let me tell you what's going to happen when it does. Very interesting article, but I want you to think of something else. I don't care. Let Walmart buy $1 billion of Bitcoin. It's going to help the whole market. I'm down. But what happens when Walmart to Walmart and RIA, the other payment service provider offered in Walmart, and MoneyGram gets back on board? What happens when all of Walmart's payment services are running through on-demand liquidity? Tell me what happens. I'm going to leave it like that. Leave the comments below. I want to know what you think is going to happen when Walmart announces that all the payment service providers, which are already Ripple partners, start running on on-demand liquidity. You tell me what happens to the price right then and there because I know what happens. But listen, I got to go get ready for work at 7.43. I got 17 minutes to make it to the office. Am I going to do it? Probably not. Will I try? Of course. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.